Hi, welcome to part three of the video series on Medusa's head. In this section, we are going to cover the information, um, the, the text starting on page 108, going to um, the end of the first paragraph on page 110. And we are gonna discuss the blue box questions at the bottom of page 109 and at the bottom of page 110. So in this part of the story, Perseus has already defeated Medusa. Um, he has her head with the writhing snake still on it in his bag that's given to him by Athena. And he's trying to get back to his home on the island where King Polydectes is trying to marry his mother, if we remember the beginning of the story, and um, was where he was originally kind of tricked into going on this quest to begin with. However, uh, as he's trying to return, um, this terrible storm blows him off course, and he has some side adventures. Well, why are these side adventures important? They kind of add to the myth, mythos or the mythological nature of Perseus's story. And if you watch my video about what is a myth, you'll notice that I said that uh, myths can serve two purposes. One is to tell us these types of heroic uh, stories or heroic tales, like Perseus's heroic story, or it can also um, explain to us the creation of certain natural uh, phenomenon or things in the natural world. And so we see uh, it, this part of the story, it going from that first purpose of, of being like a heroic tale to that other purpose of telling us where, how things came to be. So uh, two things are created on Perseus's little side journey. One is the um, snakes in the Libyan desert are, are created by like the blood dripping out of the bag and hitting the sand and it creates the snakes in the living desert, which is kind of a gross image if you think about it too much. Um, and then there is this whole interaction that he has with uh, the giant Atlas. Atlas is an interesting character in Greek mythology. He is considered a titan. He was one of the early um, creations of the earth and uh, sided with the titans against Zeus and his Olympians in this great war and so he was punished by having to bear the weight of the heavens on, on his shoulders and sort of lift up the heavens and keep them separate from, uh, from the earth. Uh, so there are other myths about Atlas, one of them involving Hercules or Heracles, which is kind of funny because we know that that's Perseus's great grandson, so how did that exactly work? We don't know, but... Again, sometimes there's different mythological traditions that come down to us, so their timelines aren't always exactly the same. Uh, so the question on page 109 asks, why does Atlas beg Perseus to show him Medusa's head? Well, Atlas has grown weary of, of bearing the weight of the heavens on his shoulders for all this time, and when Perseus shows him Medusa's head, uh, that... Um, turns him to stone and it does a couple of things it does one thing in that it explains the origin of the atlas mountains which you can google and look at pictures of that are these great great mountain range in africa and it also helps to establish the idea that medusa's head still has a lot of power it can still turn things to stone even after she is dead so we see this ability being used against atlas and we'll see it used again, of course, in the story. So uh, the next part of the story uh, deals with this incident going on with the queen Cassiopeia and her daughter Andromeda. Uh, and the question at the bottom of 110 asks you why was, what was heroic about Perseus's rescue of Andromeda? Well, part of the heroic nature is, again, going back to uh, these heroic qualities of Perseus is that he is there and he is um, undoing a wrong. Uh, what happened to Andromeda is unfair. We can see that. She's being punished for something that her mother did, and we can see the unjustness and the unfairness of this. And so by using the Medusa's head, Perseus is able to right a wrong and so he steps in and again using the tools and the 
abilities granted to him by the gods in this way, the form of Medusa's head being able uh, to defeat this great sea monster that is coming to kill Andromeda. And I think it's interesting to contrast the behavior of Andromeda's mother, Cassiopeia, with Perseus. Cassiopeia gets into trouble because she wronged the gods, she insulted the gods. And Perseus is our hero who is obedient to the gods. So it creates an interesting contrast between the two characters. And then, of course, uh, the very grateful Andromeda becomes um, Perseus's wife, and they um, go traveling on now to get to, back to his point of origin and to resolve this conflict between him and Polydectes, which we will cover in the next section, which covers all the way from the that second paragraph on page 110 all the way till the end. So if you haven't read that section by now, I hope you have, but if you have not, um, go ahead and read that and we will talk about important things to notice towards the end, what can be our big takeaways, and then we will talk about that big box on page 112 where you can respond to the story. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, email me, um, post in the comments, um, post on Google Classroom, whatever format you're comfortable with. Uh, just let me know what questions you have. If you have any comments about the story, about these videos, please let me know. Miss you guys. See you soon. Bye.